In this video, we'll be talking about classifying numbers and how they fit into different number systems. You can see here that we have a number of different systems that we're going to be talking about. First off, we have natural numbers classified with, or the symbol for which is the capital letter N. We have whole numbers, which are the symbol for is a capital W. We have integers, which you can say is either a capital Z or an I, depending on your book. In this book, we're going to be using a capital Z. We have rational numbers represented by the letter Q. We have irrational numbers, which don't have a symbol, really. And we have real numbers, which are represented by the capital letter R. So let's talk about this, what these different number systems mean. Once you have this, you might, you might want to pause for a second and write these down, and then we'll go on. First of all, let's say then that we start with, don't worry about the side notes here, we'll get to that. Let's say that we have the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm counting upward, I'm going to start at 1, I'm going to start counting up in whole number segments. These are called the natural numbers, so I'll label that with an N. Natural numbers start at 1 and go upward in 1s. If I, let's say, though, that I wanted to count, and this time I wanted to start with the number 0. So I started counting 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, as far as I wanted to count, as high as I could count. Notice that the only difference between this first situation and the second situation is that I involved the number 0. Well, because you involved the number 0, we're now talking about whole numbers. One thing that I want you to notice is that the number 1 is actually in both of these systems. And the one we could say is a whole number, we could also say one is a natural number. We'd be correct both times. We could say the same thing for two or three or four or a hundred or a thousand or a million. But we cannot say that zero is a natural number. Zero is a whole number, but not a natural number. That's why I've drawn this circle around the end. So at one, two, three, four are properties of both of these. We're, we're, we're members of both of these. Zero is only a member of the outside ring. So really, that's our wild card, right? Now, let's say that we went a step further. We're going to start counting, but we're going to start counting at a negative number, like a negative 1,000 or negative 100 or whatever it is. So I'll write something like this, dot, 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 negative 3, 2, 1, something like this. If I start including negative numbers, we're now talking about integers, the next set of systems. Go. We'll represent this with the capital Z, right? Integers. The only difference between integers and whole numbers is the fact that if we're talking about integers, we're including negative numbers in the conversation. If I'm talking about whole numbers, I've included zero in the conversation and anything above it as long as it's a whole number. If I'm talking about natural numbers, it's only one and above and only the whole numbers. Okay, so notice once again, one. 1, 1, 1 is included in all of these. 1 is not only an integer, but it's also a whole number. It's also a natural number, right? It can be members of multiple sets. 0 is our wild card here. Now we're talking negative numbers are our new introduction for this set. All right, let's go one step further. What if I'm talking about numbers? What if I start counting and I say 1, 1 half, 2, 2, 2 and a half, 3, 3 and a half, 4, and what if I start including fractions? Well, then we better account for that, right? And that's where we have rational numbers, and we represent that with the letter Q. Now, the reason that we picked the letter Q is because it stands for quotient. And quotients, we know, are involved with division, and division means fractions, right? So any number that you can express as a fraction, say something like this, 2 and 7 ninths, there's a good fraction. 1 half, there's a fraction. Negative 14 thirds. There's a fraction. Any number that I can express as a fraction is a member of the rational numbers. So now I can count in any increment that I want. And you know what? If I started counting, say, 0, 1 half, 1, 1 and a half, 2, 2 and a half, 3, notice that the numbers 1 show up again. So I could include, if I wanted to, 1 as a rational number, because I can state it as 1 over 1. This can be written as a fraction. So 1 is not only a natural number, but it's a whole number, it's an integer, and it's a rational number now. Now we have to break off from this, this like all-encompassing section, because there are certain numbers that we can't express as fractions, and so they don't really fit in with any of this stuff. They're their own separate category. Let's draw it off to the side here. And they're called, if they're not rational, they must be irrational. Ir rational. And they're kind of their own separate system. 
Now, irrational numbers, sorry about that, my lights went off. Irrational numbers include things like, the most famous is probably pi. You cannot write pi as a fraction. 3.141592655, blah, 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 blah. It cannot be simplified into a fractional format. We have another one called the natural number that we'll experience later on, e. And we'll talk about that. It's like 2.71 something. We have other numbers that can't be resolved into fractions, like the square root of 5. You cannot write the square root of 5 as a fraction in the sense that we do these. And so we call those irrational numbers. Irrational, the opposite of rational, not rational. If this makes sense, then we've got one more step, and then we're going to stop. All of these, no matter whether they're rational or whether they're real, or whether they're, excuse me, whether they're rational or irrational, can be called real numbers. Numbers that actually exist. They are real. And so you can see now that we have two separate parties here, rational and irrational numbers. Rational can go all the way into natural numbers. And everything is a member of a real number system. Hopefully that makes sense. You should be ready for the homework now.